Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Russia's security service arrested American reporter Evan Gershkovich of the Wall Street Journal on espionage charges. The 31-year-old was detained in a city over 1,000 miles east of Moscow while allegedly trying to obtain classified information. Russia's Federal Security Service, known as the FSB, alleged that the reporter was, quote, acting on instructions from the American side to collect information about the activities of one of the enterprises of the Russian military industrial complex that constitutes a state secret, end quote. Gershkovich is the first American reporter to be arrested on espionage charges in Russia since September 1986 during the Cold War. The arrest came during a moment of bitter tension between the West and Russia over its war in Ukraine and as the Kremlin intensified their crackdown on opposition groups. The Wall Street Journal has denied the charges against Gershkovich, labeled them as a vicious affront to a free press and called for his immediate release. Last Thursday, a Moscow court rem remanded Gershkovich in pre-trial detention until May 29th, though Gershkovich's defense team has appealed against his pre-trial detention. Students have returned to school after a shooting killed six people at a Christian school in Tennessee. On Monday, March 27th, 28-year-old Audrey Hale entered the Covenant School by firing through the front glass doors and climbing into the school. Police said Hale was armed with three firearms and had de detailed maps of the school, along with writings related to the shooting. Police have determined that the shooter planned the attack over a period of months, but the motive still remains under investigation. The victims of the shooting included three nine-year-old nine students, Evelyn Dykhaus, William Kinney, and Haley Scruggs. Also killed were custodian Mike Hill, substitute teacher Cynthia Peak, head of the school Catherine Kuntz. The city has set up a fund to help support the survivors of the shooting at cmft.org slash support survivors of the Covenant School shooting. After weeks of speculation, former President Donald Trump has been indicted by a New York grand jury. He's facing multiple charges of falsifying business records, including at least one felony offense. Trump is the first former president ever to face an indictment, and the political implications are unknown ahead of the next year's presidential election. The indictment came after a grand jury probe into hush money paid by his former attorney, Michael Cohen, during the 2016 presidential campaign to squelch al allegations of an extramarital sexual encounter. The investigation dug into six-figure payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels and former Playboy model Karen McDougal. Trump has denied any wrongdoing involving payments and has denounced the investigation as a scam, a persecution, and an injustice. He argues that it is a that it is specifically designed to damage his 2024 presidential run. Lawmakers are unconvinced after the five hours of testimony from TikTok CEO Xu Zichu and are planning to move forward with plans for a national TikTok ban following the hearing between Chu and the U.S. House Committee. The U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Kevin McCarthy said on Twitter, quote, It's very concerning that the CEO of TikTok can't be honest and admit what we already know to be true. China has access to TikTok user data, end quote. Calls are growing in the U.S. to pass bipartisan legislation to give Joe Biden's administration legal authority to seek a ban. The bill, the Restrict Act, would allow the federal government to regulate and even ban foreign-produced technology, including TikTok. Though many of the 150 million TikTok users are protesting this potential ban. Outside of the hearing, a group of content creators protested the ban holding up signs that read, Keep TikTok. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, too, has spoken up and made her first ever TikTok to speak out against a potential ban, highlighting the unprecedented nature of such an action. 
On another note, while the state is not reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On March 30th, newly released metrics show that over 56,000 molecular tests were conducted and 2,023 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of March 28th, 84 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 36 are in the ICU. 59 new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. If you're 50 or older, it's important to stay up to date on COVID vaccines. Boosters greatly reduce your chance of severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and are an important defense. Even if you've already had COVID, schedule your appointment today at mass.gov slash COVID booster. Welcome back. During the March 20th school committee meeting, Superintendent James Lee presented a budget proposal. The committee has asked Mayor Charles Kokoris for an additional $6.25 million in next year's budget. The proposed budget includes money that the district would use for negotiating with employee unions and over $2 million to make up for federal funds that were used this year. During Lee's presentation, he detailed that the 2024 budget, as it currently stands, would sit at over $74 million, and the 2023 adjusted budget stands at over $68 million. $68 million. The committee will again discuss the subject on April 4th, followed by an April 11th public hearing on the school budget at 6.30 p.m. at the Colbert Building. As part of a plan to free up classroom space in elementary schools and the Braintree High School, all of the town's kindergarten and preschool classes will move into the South Middle School building this fall. The school committee heard several recommendations looking at ways to make the school system more efficient and equitable, thus making the effort to make good use of the current South building, which will be empty later this year. With this, the Manadequit School and the former Colbert School, which is currently used as an administrative building, will both close. The administrators will too move into the current South building. School Superintendent James Lee told the school committee that the schools could receive up to $120,000 in income by renting out the Manadequit and the Colbert buildings. Redistricting may become an obstacle as proposals received little support at a public hearing this month from residents and committee members. Braintree's Deputy Chief of Police, Tim Cahoon, graduated as a member of the 285th session of the FBI National Academy, a status that less than 1% of police officers nationally are able to claim. Cahoon has served the Braintree Police Department since 1996, and he currently oversees Braintree Police operations. Chief Mark Dubois, who also graduated from FBI National Academy, said, quote, Attending the FBI National Academy is an impressive accomplishment and a career highlight for Tim. This training will significantly benefit the police department and community for the rest of his law enforcement career." End quote. Braintree officials announced that the compost site will have slight alterations as the town heads into the month of April. The site will be open April 1st and 2nd, but closed April 3rd and 4th. Then starting April 5th, the site will resume normal schedule of Wednesday to Sunday from 7.15 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. On Wednesday, March 29th, the Old Colony Hospice and Palliative Care recognized National Vietnam War Veterans Day with a drop-in social at Braintree Town Hall. Here's a clip from the event. This is the second year that we're doing Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans here in the town of Braintree. We absolutely love what we do for our veteran patients, and we have what we call a little recognition ceremony for them, where as a team we visit them, we take a moment to thank them personally for their service. We are here today to recognize our Vietnam veterans. Unfortunately, 58,220 soldiers did not return home. And for the soldiers who did return home, they did not receive the welcome that they deserved. So on behalf of our entire team, thank you for what you've done. And I promise we think about you often 
and we are truly grateful for what you've done and for your families who supported you through it. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts and thank you so much for being here. It was a few years ago when uh, we first recognized uh, this event of uh, Welcome Home for our Vietnam veterans. And I will tell you that for a number of years, a gentleman uh, worked with me and he was Vietnamese and, and he was so grateful for what the American troops did for him and for his country. I'm just glad that today we have the opportunity to finally honor all of you that served in Vietnam. And it's thanks to your actions that keep us free. Thank you and welcome home. Another event celebrating veterans, the Art of the Veteran Project will begin on Friday, April 7th at Braintree Town Hall. This project will honor veterans and display Braintree High School students' artworks. Members of the community are all welcome to view the pieces of work. Just in time for Easter, you and your kids should hop on over to Braintree's First Congressional Church on Saturday, April 8th for their annual Easter egg hunt. The hunt starts promptly at 10 a.m. at the church on 12 Elm Street and will have many activities for children including a bounce house, Easter bunny photos, balloon bunnies, ice cream, and more. Admission is free and all ages are welcome. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. Brian Walsh, husband of Cohasset mother Anna Walsh, was indicted by a Norfolk County grand jury in the death of his wife. Last Thursday, Walsh was indicted on charges of the murder of his wife as well as on charges of misleading a police investigation, obstruction of justice, and improper, improper conveyance or transport of a human body. Norfolk County District Attorney, Attorney Michael Morrissey said in a statement, quote, This is only a step in a long process, during which Brian Walsh enjoys the constitutional presumption of innocence and all of the protections afforded him under the Constitution, end quote. 53-year-old Bradley Rain of Hingham has now been indicted after driving his car through the front of the Hingham Apple Store last fall, which killed one person and injured 22 others. On November 21st of 2022, Rain's right foot got stuck on the accelerator while driving in the Derby Street Plaza. Rain has no connection to the store or any of the victims and has no criminal record in Massachusetts. Rain was also given an alcohol breath test at the police station, which detected no alcohol in his blood. Rain was indicted by a Plymouth County grand jury on Tuesday on a charge of second-degree murder, reckless driving, motor vehicle homicide by reckless driving, four counts of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and 18 counts of aggravated assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Rain will now be arraigned on, ch on the charges in Brockton Superior Court, but a date has not been set. Legislation signed earlier this year set boundaries for how much space motorists must give cyclists and pedestrians on the road. Now, as of Saturday, April 1st, the law took effect. The law essentially defi defines what a vulnerable road user is and ways to protect them as they travel alongside motorists. One of these pro protections is that drivers are required to leave at least four feet between their vehicle and vulnerable users, like pedestrians as they pass. Vulnerable road users include pedestrians, those repairing utility facilities, emergency workers, cyclists, skateboarders, roller skaters, those in wheelchairs or motorized scooters, as well as those who ride horses, drive horse-drawn carriages, and those driving farm vehicles like tractors. Monday, March 27th, Governor Maura Healey announced Philip Eng has been named the General Manager of the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. 
Eng, an engineer, has decades of experience running public transit systems as he formerly was the president of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority's Long Island Railroad and most recently the executive vice president at the engineering consultant firm, the Lero Group. During a news conference, Eng said, quote, It is clear that the MBTA service is not at the level that it needs to be, and it hasn't been that way for far too long, end quote. He says it's time for a new way of doing business. The MBTA released the proposed fiscal 2024 through 2028 MBTA capital investment plan and is inviting the public to comment on its proposal for the next 30 days. The CIP is the five-year financial plan that funds all the MBTA's capital projects, which are investments or activities related to acquiring, renewing, constructing, improving, or maintaining a capital asset including project planning and design. The proposed CIP is now available on mbta.com CIP. The MBTA also plans to host a virtual public meeting on Wednesday, April 12th at 6.30 p.m. For more information about these meetings, you can visit mbta.com slash events. The second annual Quincy Multicultural Festival is scheduled for Saturday, May 13th. Cultural displays including Chinese flower folding, Mexican piñatas, henna tattoos, and many others will fill the Four River Clubhouse for a festival that aims to highlight Quincy's diversity. The event will include performances, food from around the world, and displays put together by Quincy families to showcase their heritage. This year, the festival is registered as a nonprofit organization, and the event will raise money to support families interested in participating. The Quincy Multicultural Festival is scheduled for noon to 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 13th. For more information, visit discoverquincy.com. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Want a year of no cost birth control with just one trip to the pharmacy? Access. A Massachusetts law can make it easier. Get more control over your birth control. Find out if you're covered. Learn more at mass.gov slash birth control. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations. First up in entertainment, The Boston Strangler is a true crime series set in the 1960s. The film focuses on Loretta McLaughlin, a reporter at the Record American newspaper, who faces rampant sexism from her employer while she attempts to connect the dots and unravel the mystery of a serial killer on the loose. The film was just released on March 17th and stars Kiera Knightley. You can watch The Boston Strangler on Hulu. Next up in entertainment, Shazam! Fury of the Gods focuses on Billy Batson and his fellow foster kids who were bestowed with the power of gods. The kids struggle to juggle teenage life with their superhero alter egos. When a trio of vengeful ancient gods arrive on Earth in search of magic stolen from them long ago, Shazam! and his allies are ready to battle for their superpowers, lives, and the fate of the world. You can watch Shazam! Fury of the Gods now only in theaters. Finally in entertainment, 65 focuses on Pilot Mills, who after a catastrophic crash on an unknown planet discovers he's actually stranded on Earth 65 million years ago. Pilot Mills and the only other survivor, Koa, only have one chance at a rescue and must make their way across an unknown terrain riddled with prehistoric creatures. The film was released March 10th and stars Adam Driver. You can watch 65 now only in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.